Hello and happy Wednesday. I am Meredith and I am here with our message for the 23rd of October 2024. We've got Wonderland and Oz Tarot on the table. The sun is in Scorpio, first full day of Scorpio season. Happy birthday. Uh, the moon's in Cancer, Neptune, Saturn, Jupiter, Chiron, Uran Uranus, all in retrograde. Uh, let's see what's going on in the energy atmosphere. As always, I mentioned this, this deck does not disappoint. It always produces plenty of cards when we shuffle them out. First set of two, we've got two of wands coming back at us today. I believe this one was in yesterday's reading. Uh, taking a step in the direction of a whole world of fulfillment. <laughs> Choosing our path. And as we've seen recently on a super fabulous foundation, it's paired with beautiful, the star, everything that we've been keeping the faith for, we're moving in the direction of, I love seeing these kind of messages because, you know, we get repeats for months, some, well, weeks and sometimes months at a time. And I feel that yet another page has turned in this chapter where we've got great evidence for everything we are in fulfillment with. Some of this stuff has been, you know, in manifestation with us for years. And how amazing is it to see the very things we're keeping the faith for come to life on our foundation. And that's what our first two cards are about. So we've seen uh, the fool a few times in, the re in recent weeks. So we've been taking leaps of faith in our, in, or with our intuitive guidance. And now we're seeing the evidence of this. Excellent. <laughs> then we have, wow, the 10 of wands. Another excellent card. Remember the tens are all about fulfillment. And when you see the 10 of wands, you know, it's often spoken of as a burden because the character on the card is carrying a heavy load. 10 of wands, ace of wands to the power of 10. So what's that energy all about? It's passion, creativity, ambition, motivation, uh, our ability to follow through, take all these actions uh, for a step in the right direction, which we're seeing here with the two of wands toward fulfillment. So I really do see the fulfillment of the ten of wands as less a burden and more a celebration of an opportunity or many opportunities to use our spiritual resource. All those affirmations, uh, being soulfully present, awake, aware, alert, and expanded in the now moment. And tangling far less with our ego and celebrating so much more our spirit. These are some of the ingredients that have gone into everything that we have been co-creating with the divine. Next set of two cards. The first is King of Cups. Beautiful. So this is taking action with our intuition. Exactly what we're talking about here. And the King and Queen of Cups bring the pure raw love. This is, <laughs> if you ever needed a highly motivating energy to leverage and or apply to all this beautiful wand energy over here, it's love, right? The most powerful energy in the multiverse. And I feel like we're bringing it with this beautiful king. So lots of happiness here, profound intuition, and the ability to take action on the intuitive guidance. Paired with excellent the Ace of Wands. Does it get any better, folks? You already have the 10, which is the Ace to the power of 10. And now we have the Ace itself proper, which indicates also a new beginning and a fresh start. Also, Aces negate any challenges within cards nearby so if you're someone who subscribes to uh the meaning of the ten of wands as a burden this ace is taking the burden out of that <laughs> i really do subscribe to it as in the <clears throat> collection gathering garnering of all of our resources and putting that on the foundation to make a move, take a step. So if there's something that you've been wanting to or desiring to fulfill in the now, this, this is the moment. These are the moments. The universe is supporting all of your actions. So some of us may have backburnered some projects. 
we can pull them off the back burner now because we're going to be met with the resources we require if we don't have them all already, right? Next card. One of the extra major arcanas in this deck and it's the empath. I love this card, it's fantastic. I feel like it's a divine masculine energy uh, that complements the high priestess. <laughs> and you know, she's the inner oracle. We have a lot of guidance coming through our intuition. I can't stress it enough or emphasize it enough. No stress, emphasis. <laughs> We've seen so many of the cup cards, like the queen has showed up often. The high priestess shows up often in many other minor arcana cards that have us turning over and over again to our intuitive guidance our intuitive guidance system. So this is where we are grounded so much more than ever. So be in, be awake to all of your empathic awarenesses. You know, being, being empathic is, it's really interesting. It can be such a mixed bag because empaths feel everything. And oftentimes they're not, or they sense everything, They're, they can be challenged in the beginning of discovering how empathic they are to turn the dial down enough so that they're actually feeling, sensing, perceiving their own empathic vibrations rather than what's coming out of the environment or the people in the environment. Empathic energy has, you know, it can at times create a little inner chaos. So be present and mindful of this and get grounded. That's all that's required. Grounding, centering, heart, mind, coherence. And as your empathic intuition rises to the surface, you're just going to feel your way through this fresh environment, atmosphere rather, and take steps in the direction of all the love that you are and all the love that you're creating on your foundation. Next set, three cards first. Oh, excellent. There's the fool, as mentioned earlier in the reading. So this is us taking the leap of faith with no, no fear of consequence, right? We have enough experience. We saw the emperor yesterday <laughs> staring down the devil <laughs> from behind uh, with the strength card. So... If that doesn't speak to you in terms of being bold, taking action, doing definitely taking the leap of faith here, I don't know what else will. So look at all this. You've got the Ten of Wands. That's a whole lot of fire. It's all the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, all rolled up into that suit. How beautiful. You have the Ace of Wands itself really charging up the love and the intuition of the King of Cups and a readiness to take a leap of faith. Then we have all of our empathic abilities firing. So we're sensing, perceiving the rightness of our journey within the atmosphere. And we're focused on fulfilling our dreams through the star card and staying on the path that speaks to our heart and soul. The fool is paired with... <laughs> The high priestess. So let's let's review. King of Cups, intuition, empath, intuition, high priestess, intuition. Hmm. No one else has the answers but you when it comes to you. <laughs> so listen to uh, or be awake, aware, and alert with all of these messages coming your way. You are being so divinely guided. And then we have, look at that, the Ten of Cups. Ooh, nice, two tens. So you see we have all the resource we require to maintain, support, and grow our Ten of Cups lifestyle. This is one of the happiest, happier cards in tarot by my estimation. This is the Ace of Cups to the power of ten. Beautiful, that's a lot of love, bliss, joy, and happiness overflowing on the foundation. And we have the ability to pick up this beautiful Ace of Wands and wield the magic that we are. The miraculous, loving magic that we are always in the direction of our own fulfillment. Gorgeous cards. Gosh. 
bottom of the deck, what's going on behind the scenes? How's the universe helping us out? <laughs> Judgment. <laughs> oh, what a contrast, right? Artistically speaking, by comparison to all the other cards. The Judgment card is really awesome, though. This is uh, having the opportunity to resurrect some energies that can serve us now. So drawing on our experience is what I'm feeling through judgment. Also, when judgment shows up, you may also witness uh, some of your emotional reactions from the past in the now. And the challenge there is to check in with your heart space and make sure that energy is of service to you. Is it an old programmed response that you're resurrecting? Or is it experience that's valuable to your journey now that you're resurrecting? Check it out. Next card. <laughs> wow, the underside of the deck. It's really funny right now. This has happened a few times for us in recent readings. There's the Eight of Swords. I love that we have that lion in the background there because... We had the strength card yesterday paired with the devil. And in the eight of swords, we're liberating ourselves from something. So judgment, probably through, you know, a cosmic alignment with these retrograde planets uh, is going to show us anything that is limiting us by the way we think and feel. Having us challenge, is this old energy? Is this old program belief system that I've been handed? Or is this authentically me? And is it working for me in the now? That's what the Eight of Swords is all about. And it's an eight, so it's got momentum. So we're moving through this energy. And we're challenging this energy kindly, lovingly, and gently. So that we can achieve our highest and greatest in the moment. It's an excellent card. Yeah, and then we have the Hermit showing up again. I think this is the third time. Three days in a row with the Hermit, perhaps? Love this card because I, the core meaning of this card is a quest beckons. This is the quest we have been on. And here we are celebrating evidence of, as we reinvest more of what's evolving in the now to the oncoming, simultaneously celebrating what presently is. And the, the quest that beckons is the soul's journey and shining our soulful, magical, miraculous, loving light as we're talking about over here in the reading. So here's the hermit showing up. This is us in our soulful presence, being guided by our own enlightenment experience, if you will. Excellent. I like seeing this next to the Eight of Swords because as I mentioned, we're liberating ourselves from some old mental trap, belief system, whatever it is. And that's happening through resurrection, maybe a walk down memory lane us accessing our own memory field on purpose and maybe even empathically so you know feeling into prior experience and being met with some contrast which gives us great new perspective doesn't it because this is everything we're cultivating over here in great happiness and harmony so anything opposite that is going to draw our attention likely stimulate the ego and there's the quest so take the leap of faith with compassion into the judgment card and free yourself from anything that's holding you back. Perfect, Queen of Wands. Now, there's the Fire Queen. She's excellent in this scenario. One of the things I love about the Queen of Wands or even the Queen of Swords, neither one of those queens take any crap. <laughs> They just get down to business of living passionately and decisively. Love that. So bring that energy to anything that you resurrect that's not serving you. Have compassion for it, yet turn it into fuel, right? Like the Ace of Wands. And then we have the Hanged Man coming back. See, new perspective, fresh enlightenment. Turn to your own inner enlightenment from the journey thus far and bring all of your strength, all of your love, wisdom, and most especially your amazing intuitive gifts to the moment and see what you can do today that maybe you couldn't do six months ago, right? That's exciting. 
It's kind of adventurous even. Angel answers. Put a question, a query, a contemplation to this deck. Let your guides, angels, ancestors speak to you. Abundance. Perfect card. An abundance of fulfillment on offer to us. Is that what I is what I feel when I look at that card? Ooh, we got one on the floor. We also have no need to worry. <laughs> Trust was our fly baby from the deck. <laughs> Yeah, trust yourself, trust your experience. Gosh, let go. I feel like that one backs up the fool quite nicely. Just let go and take that leap of faith with yourself. One more. Peaceful resolution. I like seeing this, especially with the judgment card popping out next to that eight of swords. Peaceful resolution for energies that no longer serve, they're on their way out, or from a time when you didn't exactly trust your soulful presence and instead, you know, you were yielding to your ego to keep yourself safe. <laughs> I don't think there really is any such thing as safe exactly when it comes to finding the courage within ourselves to take the leap. And we know it's there, we've got it. Our enlightenment and our intuition tells us so. It's about being brave and bold enough to actually take that step. <laughs> Final card, angels and ancestors. What would our soulful presence love to share with us right now? And we have, nice. We have the high priest, intend and create. Perfect, so we've got the high priestess. We've got the high priest. We've got the empath card. We've got a whole lot going on over here. Beautiful. Leave some comments. What are you all up to? What are you creating? What are you seeing evidence of on your foundation? Share some of your joy, happiness, and success with the group here on YouTube. Have the most beautiful Wednesday ever. Peak of the week. Namaste.